Today, the DH incubator is a follow up of uh, the past two and is like uh, heavily focused on getting us ready for the upcoming workshop. But it should also be helpful for those who are not uh, going to attend the workshop. Uh, but also for some, um, you know, these topics are kind of a refresher or a repetition. So if you if you already know it all, you know, you feel like extremely welcome to to use your time for something different. Like, totally, totally okay. Uh, in particular, uh, I um, wanted to discuss how to set up use this to implement the workflows that we have been discussing in the past two meetups to implement them in an automated way uh, and. Uh, so because I thought that today, you know, we were going to be ready to uh, actually start in using the workflow, but I realized that the setup is actually quite challenging. So I wanted to experience it myself and um, I leave a record of it on video. Uh, and uh, because it's, if it's, you know, it's challenging, so we better like, do it together. And uh, I thought that, you know, one good way to do it was to do it on our studio cloud. So you have there an environment that should behave similar for everyone hoping that, you know, that will increase the, ch increase the chance that we will get there. And then uh, it's kind of up to you to try replicate what we experienced today on our studio cloud to try to replicate it with your own computer. So the, that's, that's the goal, basically, to set up um, a few things that will help not only with use this, but, you know, working with GitHub from our studio in general. So the, the, there is this doc, as usual, uh, and you can find it at the date of today uh, and DSI as usual. So bit late 2020 08 11 DSI. Uh, and the idea is to kind of work on this uh, with whoever wants to do this setup uh, to work together. So let's, you know, like run one line, then um, if you can kind of follow along, great. And if you don't, uh, you know, I'm going to give some time to do it. So the very first step is to go to our studio cloud and, and log in there. So I'm going to do just that. Uh, I'm going to be working from a different account than the one that I usually use because I want to experience, um, where is it actually? Here. Um, I'm going to be logged in as someone, uh, as, as myself, but in a different account. Uh, so I have in my Studio Cloud uh, in, um, platform, I have zero projects now, like nothing, it's empty. Uh, but you could have any number of projects, that's fine with you. So I'm going to create a new project. Um, and if you are there, uh, if you want to follow along, you, you can just do that. This is going to take a little while. So I'm going to go back to the doc and, uh, and start preparing for the next step. So once the project is um, is finished, I'm going to rename it as something a little bit more meaningful. And then I'm going to install a bunch of packages. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be installing only use this and dev tools. But I strongly recommend that in this project, you later install also the tidyverse because we are going to be using it during the, the workshop. So I'm, I mean, I'm copying this line here uh, and I'm going to go back to their Studio Club Cloud project. Uh, and here I'm going to type something like project. So it's the name of the project that will contain potentially many projects. That's kind of a funky setup, but it's, it's one setup that works well. Um, basically, that it's one setup that allows us to reuse the effort that we put into setting up use this. The problem with our Studio Cloud is that it's kind of very project based. So every time that you create a new project, you're kind of, you have to set everything up again. You have to tell who you are to Git. You have to set up your, your GitHub token and all of that. And it's a bit of a pain. So instead of doing it over and over again, you know, with this approach, we are creating one project. And then inside that, we are going to nest uh, all the projects that we want to work with, which is kind of not generally recommended, but it's kind of a hack that for now, that's kind of the best idea that, that I came up with. <laughs> Hopefully you know, that will improve. So what I'm going to do now is you know, paste that line to install these two packages, use this and dev tools. And while this installs, I'm going to kind of explain what's the relationship with these two packages. Uh, a lot of the tools that, uh, so basically when, when uh, everything started, it was just dev tools. And dev tools included a bunch of functions that, you know, became important on themselves. And then they were extracted into this other package called use this. So most, most, but not all, of the functions that we're going to be using today come from the use this package. 
but the tools is like an umbrella package. Uh, it's, it, it is a package in itself, but it is also a meta package. So when you attach the tools, you also have available to you all the tools that come in use this. So it can be a little confusing that, you know, we may refer to, you know, attach use this or attach the tools, but uh, we are kind of referring to the same thing. We want everything that comes with use this. And sometimes a shortcut for doing that is just attaching the tools. So while this completes, uh, and it shouldn't take too long because now um, rstudio.cloud installs packages from binaries. Uh, maybe the, the distinction between the binary and the source code is not relevant for this meetup, but what it means for you now is that it's going to install much faster than you used to experience installations, uh, say, a month ago. So after we do that, the first thing we're going to do is to actually start using uh, dev tools. So all the tools that come with dev tools, including use this. And there is this convenient function called use dev tools, which uh, allows us to set up one file that makes dev tools available in every interactive session without us needing to run every time the function library. So let's do just that. Let's go back to our studio cloud. It has already finished. So I'm going to paste those two lines. And, uh, and this will open this file automatically, our profile, with a little instruction. Uh, the instruction says that we need to kind of basically paste. I'm doing control V. And actually that's, these two lines come from the previous time I copied anything. So instead I'm gonna just highlight this and copy. And we paste them here in the file. Um, I'm gonna also create a new line. It's not important for this file, but it's just um, something that I'm becoming used to doing. Then we save the file and uh, we have to restart the session for this change to take effect. So we go to session and restart. I'm going to admit Vincent. So this is also a good place to make a little pause uh, if you need to catch up. Uh, so can I hear... Um, Kind of here, like allowed if, if you're trying to, to do this and if you need, like, say, a couple of minutes. You don't need time, you're ready to go. Thumbs up if you're ready to go. Yes, okay. If you're not following, that's fine. You know, this, this is going to be a recording of this and you can use it later. Uh, but you know, I wanted to leave a record of this because it's, it's going to be like a requirement for, for the upcoming workshop. Because if you don't have things set up correctly, uh, you just you know going to waste time setting things up as opposed to working. So with that thing set up, with this line in your app profile, you can now close the file and you have already restarted the, the session. So the next thing is to uh, kind of see what's our situation. There is this uh, function called git sit rep for situation report that uh, comes from the use this package. So I'm going to um, clean things up a little bit with control L and now I'm going to paste git zip rep. Uh, and even if I restarted, notice that I don't have to do library the tools or library use this because it's already available in any interactive session. And that is what we just did in the previous step. So now with uh, git zip rep, what we see is, you know, what's the situation in terms of uh, configurations? And, you know, the takeaway is that our configuration is still, is still kind of empty kind of. So Git, for example, doesn't know who we are. It doesn't know our name. It doesn't know our email. And that's something that we must do. Uh, and also there is a few other things like, for example, we haven't given uh, any information about our GitHub account that use this could use to do things on our behalf. So that's the next step that we're going to do. So let's go back to the doc. Uh, what we want to do now is to configure Git. Uh, we are going to tell Git who we are. This is something that you already did in your local computer maybe a while ago when you first set things up. So Git you know, already knows what's your name and what's your email and the email in particular, not any email, but the email that is associated to your GitHub account. So that's what we're going to do now um, uh, on RStudio Cloud because RStudio Cloud is a different computer, different to your local one. So it doesn't know anything yet about you. So I'm going to paste that. Uh, and instead of, you know, these fake names, for example, I'm going to actually use my real information. So feel free to start setting things up for yourself. Uh, and here I'm going to be... Yes, go ahead. Yeah. 
That's an excellent question. I mean, to be honest, the the goal is for you to be able to do anything that you do in RStudio Cloud to be able to do it locally. But for every class I've ever been involved, uh, RStudio Cloud has been a saver in, in basically allowing us to spend time f learning stuff as opposed to figuring out set up things. So my recommendation would be the following. As a backup, try to have RStudio Cloud set up uh, and then try to set up your own computer. If, if you, you know, right away figure things out on your own computer and you can work from there, then great. But if it doesn't work, I wouldn't um, recommend to kind of get lost in configurations on the fly. I suppose I would just recommend to just drop your, your local session and go to the, to the cloud and keep working there. And the reason is because, you know, as you can see, these things are very picky and anything that you get wrong, it can completely stop your, your progress. Uh, and we don't want to learn about configuration during the workshop. That's why I'm spending this time here. We want to learn about, you know, some concepts uh, that are way more interesting. So honestly, like totally up to you, but you know, if you kind of get stuck with configuration, I will just assume that you, sh you should be able to jump quickly to our studio cloud and kind of serve yourself an environment that is known to work. Not only that, but it's also known to work in the same way for everyone, because we are having like a clone of the same our environment. Okay, cool. So here I'm gonna write my email account, and this is the one, it's kind of a, funky one that I use for these demos. So with that, I'm giving Git my um, information. So if I do another Git sit rep, you could see that now Git knows about who I am. Uh, and remember, this has to be the email that uh, is associated to your GitHub account. Um, if you're used to using Git from the terminal, you, know, you could have used some Git uh, commands to do the same thing. So this is the same thing, but just using an, an R interface. So we don't have to use the terminal. So let's go back to the doc and see the next step. Yeah, <laughs> you're right, eh? I'm not vaccinated. There is a function, I don't even know exactly what it does, but it, it sounds promising. I could, I could love a function like COVID vaccinate or something like that. <laughs> So I'm scrolling down to step number six, uh, which is the last one really of setup, uh, which is we are gonna, uh, now Git knows who we are, but there is still no information. This, there is still no information about our GitHub account that use this knows about. So that's what we wanna do. Basically we want to give um, to this uh, RStudio.cloud project, we need to give it some information so that it can serve itself to stuff that it leaves in our GitHub account. And that's a pretty, strong privilege, right? So, you know, we are going to be dealing with private information uh, and I'm going to expose that private information here for you because it's, it's a, t a, a demo and I'm going to destroy it later, but you certainly shouldn't do that. You should certainly treat that as a password, right? So we're going to run the function browse GitHub token uh, and that will send us to our GitHub account, the one associated to the email that we have just configured to Git. Uh, we can, if you want, change this name to something that is associated because you will end up with many tokens uh, configured on GitHub. Um, I'm not gonna bother with that now, but you know, probably you could you could add the date of the day or you know the, the platform where you are setting this up. For example, it could be the day of today, our Studio Cloud or something like that. Um, and then nothing here needs to really change. You just click the green button, generate token. Uh, it looks like, because I have been kind of practicing uh, before, uh, it looks like I have already uh, a token that has exactly the same name. So I'm gonna say um, another our GitHub pad. Let's see if that works. Basically, it doesn't want uh, to overwrite an existing token. And this is an important step. So pause here and copy by clicking here on the, um, on the copy thing. Uh, copy the token to your clipboard because that is what you need. Uh, and actually I'm gonna take the chance to delete the old one here because uh, it was part of the demo. So I'm gonna copy the token that I have just created and I have, of course, to go back to our studio cloud and give it uh, in a special place. So as you notice, you will have now, uh, you know, when we call the function browse GitHub token, it, the first thing it did is send us 
to GitHub, but it also printed some information that we now need to follow. So basically it is telling us that we need to run the function edit our environ. And notice how I don't uh, use the, I don't need to use the namespace. I don't need to say use this because again, you know, I set this up so that use this is always available in my interactive sessions. So I'm following the instructions. I'm following this step. I'm running the function edit our environ and run uh, that. That opens that file called our environ. And the next thing I need to do is to type exactly this GitHub path equal. So let's do that. It has to be caps. So GitHub path equal. And here is where I paste the super private token that you should ne never share with anyone, which I'm doing now, but you shouldn't. And then you need to make sure that that, that file ends with a new line. So you must have this empty line. So press end. If you are here, press enter. It doesn't matter, you, you, you may have more than one line. Save the file and then restart your um, R session for these changes to take effect. Session, restart R. Yes, correct. Uh, the, the default name, um, probably you already use the default name and you can give it any name on GitHub. Uh, the name must be the same on our environment. So you, but uh, you know, the, 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 on our environment, it must be called GitHub underscore pad, but on GitHub, you can call it whatever. And I, I recommend you to, you know, write, um, to type uh, a name that is meaningful, something like, yeah, today or RCO Cloud. Because you will end up with many tokens, one that you may use in your local computer and then one that you use with Azure Cloud. And that's fine. On GitHub, there's going to be many, but on each computer, there's going to be only one. So that's why the name on our environment here is always GitHub Pad. Okay, with that set up, I can close that file and I should be ready to go. So let's go now to the doc. And this is, okay, so let's run again git zip rep to see what things are looking like now. I'm gonna clean this up, run kitsit rep. Remember, it is important when you finish that R environment to leave a new line at the end and also to restart your session. Uh, and now I'm running kitsit rep and uh, I noticed that uh, I already have, you know, where it says GitHub, it says personal access token, it says found in env var, which means it has been found as an environmental variable via that file called our environment. So this is the setup that uh, we want. It can be even more complete, but with this, we should be good to go. Uh, and now is where I kind of want to um, kind of show off a little bit, you know, what you can do when things are set up correctly. And it is a little risky too, because um, I haven't done this many times <laughs> and sometimes I kind of fail, but, uh, but I mean, it should work. Uh, and there is ways to get around that. So, uh, little pause here. Uh, the next step is to actually start, you know, we already have the setup finished. And uh, what we are gonna do now is to start using, use this as a way to implement the Git flow, the GitHub flow workflow they have, that we have been talking about. So we're gonna be using a function called create from GitHub that comes with the use this package that does a lot of work for us. It creates a fork from a main repo into our user account and then creates a clone into the session that we are kind of running. And uh, we are gonna be deciding, uh, in this case, we're gonna be using this uh, toy package uh, called demo. Um, maybe actually, maybe use demo one because I'm afraid that you may already have um, a, a fork of, of demo. And then we are gonna specify the destination folder where we want that uh, fork to be cloned into. And we're gonna be explicit about fork that you know, we want to say, you know, there is two ways in which you can, you can adhere to the Git flow workflow, uh, to the GitHub workflow. And one is to just clone and the other one is to fork and clone. So we want to fork and clone and that's exactly why I'm saying fork. In, uh, in practice, that argument is not always necessary because that's like the default uh, if you don't have privileges to push to the to a particular repo. 
but because some of you are owners of the GitHub uh, organization to degrees investing, uh, I, I, I suspect that some of you may, may end up with a configuration different to the one that we want. So long story short, let's copy this uh, chunk here. Um, with that long explanation, I'm hoping that most people ha have been able to catch up. But let me do a little pause here and ask if anyone has a question or, or wants me to wait a little bit more before I run that. Okay, I'm gonna take that as good to go, right? So I'm gonna go back to a studio cloud and paste that before I run it um, because I want to kind of debrief a little bit. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. As you can see, our studio cloud it is also a computer and it has a directory. So as you can see, the default where we land when we open a new project is this, this folder uh, called project. And it usually is meant to be used as a standalone project, but instead we're gonna be nesting uh, this project that we want to fork and then clone into this session is gonna live now here as a, as a standalone folder. And that's a little funny. Uh, that's kind of not the way in which um, our studio cloud, I think, has been kind of designed to behave. But we're gonna hack the thing because what we want is for you to be able to reuse this project without needing to go through the setup over and over and over again. So basically we have set up one project and now we are gonna be using as, as the host for many projects from now on. Maybe this project and then you know the, the workshop project and so on and so forth. But this RStudio Cloud project will already know everything that it needs to know about you. It will know your Git configuration, it will know your GitHub token and should work. So what we are doing is saying that, okay, the destination folder, instead of being the default, which is usually your desktop folder, is gonna be this path, which means that you want to put it in here. So I'm gonna run that and cross my fingers. So the first thing that we read is that uh, it is letting us know that it's kind of weird and that this demo one project is gonna be nested inside another project and that's something uh, that generally is a bad idea. So, but we are gonna be, okay, I know what's going on uh, and I'm gonna say, yes, I'm gonna do it anyway. And now kind of it moved forward a little bit more and again, made a little pause to ask me which uh, kind of internet protocol I want to use, the ASSH protocol or the HTTPS. If you don't know, or if you have an SSH configuration or not, then just use the HTTPS and that's the one that I'm gonna be using now. And if you do know, maybe uh, if you want for now, use HTTPS just to get it work and maybe in the future you may change that to SSH, but it's kind of beyond the scope of, of this meetup. So I'm gonna say two. Uh, and this moved a little bit more and it is telling me that, uh, you know, it kind of threw an error because the, the project from which I was calling this function is not a Git repo. But uh, although that looks kind of funny, I think that that respond to my kind of hack. So why this is not maybe the best way to do it. And I probably figured something better, but, but it has kind of done what we wanted. So as you can see, there is a demo repo here. Uh, and it has, you know, what we wanted it to have. It has, it has been forked into our user account and it has been cloned. Um, so we are, you know, ready to go. Uh, let me move this a little under here. So let me clean this. Uh, and now is where, um, you know, we would start uh, working for uh, the first time uh, on a pull request. So the very first thing that you do, so again, remember, we're now using all this configuration that we just set up. Uh, let's do another git seed rep to see what's the situation right now. Um, let's see if there is any, oh, okay, so I think that, oh, bo, 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 bo. okay, notice the following. I'm standing here on the console on, on the parent of the project that I want to be working with, really. Um, so that's something that I didn't uh, anticipate because the, um, the project that I wanted to use was the, um, demo project, not the demo one. So that's the kind of change that I did on the fly. Uh, so what we really want is to 
uh, to start with this project here, with demo one, that doesn't have an RStudio uh, project file. So let's see if I can do one. Um, use RStudio, use RStudio. Maybe this is a little hack and sorry for the confusion. And uh, maybe, yeah, maybe what we're just gonna do is, you know, we navigated already to, to demo one. So click on demo one and we click here on more and say set as working directory. So with that, you know, it will change what you see here at the top to demo one. So that's exactly where we're standing now. And now we are working into a, a GitHub repository. So, um, Let's use, let's see if our studio. Pa, pa, pa. Uh, use our project. Okay, maybe I'm kind of I'm kind of got caught in my in my own uh, cleverness, um, but basically we want to restart our session here with this being an R Studio project. Okay, just to make it easier, let's do again the let's let's fork another project. Let's go back to project and set that as a working directory as we did before. So we, we were in the situation where we were before and we are gonna use create. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste the function that we did before, that call. And instead of using demo one, which is too clever for even for myself, <laughs> uh, I kind of beat myself, um, but we're gonna do demo. Demo already has an RStudio project and it should be easier to configure. And in reality, most of the uh, projects that you're going to be working with are studio projects. And I'm going to figure out, you know, how to get out of the hole that I got myself into. So I'm going to run that function now, place it in the same parent folder. I'm going to again say that, yes, I want it to be nested inside a, another project, although it's, it is generally a bad idea. And we go, let's see. Uh, okay, here we have the demo uh, project. And this one does have um, a project file, meaning that we can click on it. And when we click on it, we can say that we don't want to save the art data. When we click on it, it's gonna restart. And it's going to understand that it, this is a Git repository, as you see here at the top, right? So by, by the, what I achieved by uh, cloning this different repo is, you know, I clone a repo that already have a, an RStudio project and that's what I wanted because I wanted to be able to click on that RStudio project to restart the session as a Git repo. So as you can see there is now a Git tab, it wasn't available before and now you could um, you could create your first uh, pull request. With uh, RStudio, with uh, use this you do PR init and the name of my first PR and the name of the PR. That will create a new branch here, as you can see. And we are about to finish, because we are running out of time. And now you can do any changes. So the change that I'm gonna do now is, for example, remove this file HTML. As you can see, it now appears on the Git panel. I'm gonna commit that change, so first stage, click in there, commit. I do remove, remove HTML. And as you can see, there is no push button available here, but that's no problem because use this is already telling us how to push. It is telling us that we need to run the function PR push. And, um, and what's doing now is, you know, sending us to the owner's repo for us to submit a pull request. As you can see, the pull request comes from the branch, my first PR, from the fork, in this case, under my user account and it's proposed to be changed, to be um, immersed into the master branch of the owner's repo. And I, I can click a, a PR. So if you are at this stage, uh, and if you were able to follow, it would be nice for you to try uh, submitting a PR as I did. So first initiate it with PR init, then do some change, and then uh, push it with PR push. 
And if you achieve that, you are kind of super ready to go for, for the workshop. Uh, so with that, I need to end, but before I click stop here, uh, I would like to see if there's any burning question that you have. No burning question? Okay, as usual, feel free to leave questions after the fact on the doc. I know this is kind of boring because it's set up, but it's exactly the kind of thing that I want to avoid to, you know, wasting time during the workshop. And if, if you are now confronted with the fact that something went wrong, it is better for us to work together with this uh, right now. So just contact me you know, today, tomorrow, whenever, before the workshop, and we, we work it out. It would be great if you can transfer what you learned today into your own local machine and try to set up your local machine uh, this way. If you do that, implementing the GitHub flow uh, will be uh, much easier than, than um, it might have been so far. Okay? Thank you very much then, um, and see you around. <laughs> ciao, ciao.